Today is the 14th, Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. And reading from the proverb of this day, the 14th proverb, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will look at today. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Check me out. Okay? But, um... <laughs> We're going to be reading in uh, Proverbs 14 today a little bit. Got some verses written down here. I refer to the state in which I live as Illinois, with really good reason. Illinois is a Demokami state. Um, I'm not a Demokami, nor am I a Republican. I am neither. I do not associate or acknowledge the uh, Republican or Demokami parties. Uh, if anything, a um, um, historical Republican, um, if anything, but other than that. <laughs> but Illinois is a Demo Demokami um, state. And our governor, you'll see the thumbnail, uh, is an idiot. Ruled by the Vatican or uh, by the Vatican, by the Jesuit order. Just like most of the, if not all, the in local governments are run by the Jesuit order. I say if and almost all because you never know with some down south little uh, local governments, you don't know. But on the whole, America is in the hand of the Jesuit order. Okay? And if you think your nation is excluded from that, guess again. But uh, any of you, my brethren, sisters who live in Illinois, <laughs> Illinois has made history, apparently, with this thing that, okay, people are likening this thing, this, as you can see here, and there will be links in the description box, the Safety Act. And some have likened this onto the Hollywood movie called The Purge. The Purge Hollywood movie was a movie done a couple of years ago where in the premise of that movie, within a 12-hour period, all crime is declared legal. Murder, rape, all that kind of stuff is legal for 12 hours. And they called it The Purge. Um, Hollywood is in the business of predictive programming. Um, just like that uh, Hollywood movie, They Live, predictive programming there, talking uh, hidden about the Jesuit order, uh, but also this movie, The Purge, predictive programming. Just like the thing about zombies, that there be dead walking out there. There are walking dead out there, dead in their trespasses and sins. Just not zombies like Hollywood makes you to uh, imagine. But there are zombies walking around today, dead in their trespasses and sins. Just like the purge, predictive programming. But we're going to look a little bit at this thing that's going to come about in, uh, on January 1st, 2023. And if you saw the last video, things are going to start tightening up here in America. You watch. You watch. 2024, the uh, Jesuits are going to select a new president. I believe it's going to be uh, official Kamala Harris. And I also believe that they're going to bring Trump back onto the stage, just like the Jesuits did with Napoleon. Okay? We've talked about that in other previous videos. But let's get to some scripture here. Okay? Proverbs 14, verses 31 on verse 35. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. But the righteous hath hope in his death. And what is our hope for us today? Our hope is Jesus Christ. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. But the righteous, declared righteous by our Lord Jesus Christ, by the blood he shed on the cross, hath hope in his death. 
Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding. The fear of the Lord resteth in the heart of those that depart from evil. That which is in the midst of fools who say in the heart there is no God is made known. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. And Isaiah chapter 5, uh, you know, you need to pay attention to this particularly here in Isaiah chapter 5, because this is happening today. This is happening today, especially in America. I don't care in what nation under heaven you live in. This is applicable for our instruction and righteousness today for you in no matter what nation you are in. Especially here in America. It doesn't matter if you're in Canada, if you're in England, if you're in Croatia, if you're in Spain, if you're in Israel. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 25. And remember this, have, you know, we're going to be looking at other scriptures, but put, get, put a place mark here in Isaiah chapter 5. And go to this often when you consider what's going on today. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore is the fire devoured the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And it leads Isaiah chapter 1, just one verse, verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, that have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Jose, can you see? Now let's get to this article. Uh, while looking online uh, at this, all you got to do is type in your uh, Google search, Illinois Purge Law, and it comes up with a lot of stuff. And immediately looking at these different articles, you can see the bias within them. For example, um, there is one that is favors the Demokamis, such as Prisker himself. And then you have the others that favor the Republicans, okay? So to find a truly unbiased thing on this it was kind of hard. This one seems to do pretty well. There are going to be several links in the description box for you to look at if you are curious. And you and other nations, what, what, what has this to do with you? Well, you'll be the judge of that as we go through this, okay? So here we go. Does Illinois Safety Act make some violent crimes non-detainable before, non before trial? Now, in the doctrine or whatever of this thing, they make a big point that non-detainable is not in there, apparently. Offenses allegedly made non-detainable by the legislation include second-degree murder and drug-induced homicides, such as, you know, taking LSD or something like that. Okay. Illinois passed the Safety Act, which will go into effect in January 2023 and will make some violent crimes, including murder and homicide, 
non-detainable offenses prior to trial, which means violent criminals will be released without bail. Mostly false. What's true? The Illinois Safety Act was signed into law in February 2021. Within that legislation is the Pretrial Fairness Act, which will go into effect January 1st, 2023, eliminating cash bail in all pretrial decisions. Cash bail. You know, um, pay this amount of money, you can get out of jail. All right. While this act does aim to reduce number, what's false? While this act does aim to reduce the number of people detained in jail while they await trial, pre-trial release can still be denied when, now get a load of this, when any defendant poses a specific, real, and present threat to any person of the community, i.e., the act does not allow pre-trial release without a judge considering the severity of the case first. Therein lies the loophole. Let's continue. In early 2021, Illinois passed, Illinois passed the Safety, Accountability, Fairness, and Equity Today Safety Act a major criminal justice reform bill that addressed changes in pre-arrest, diversion, policing, pre-trial processes, sentencing, and corrections. In passing this act, Illinois became the first state in the country to abolish cash bail. There you go, Illinois, yeah. Defined as payments for jail release for arrested people who are still waiting for their cases to be heard in court. While the Safety Act was signed into law by Governor Jesuit-born Pritzker in February 2021, and many portions of it are already in effect, the no-cash bail policy will take effect on January 1st, 2023. The no-cash bail policy is part of the Pretrial Fairness Act, a piece of legislation ensconed in, in within the Safety Act that creates new processes for pre-trial release and detention decisions. Ahead of its implement, implementation, it had faced opposition from Republicans as well as law enforcement who argued that these changes would put the public and law enforcement officers at risk. And I agree with that. This is a Demokami law. This is a Demokami law. But see, as we looked at already, the loophole that they will say, um, the loophole that's going to be about this thing is the, where was that? Uh, that the judge, yeah, the judge will be able to decide uh, whether the person will be detained if the person poses a specific real and present threat to any person or the community. And what did we just read in Isaiah? Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Well, as morality has shifted toward evil here in America, and the governments basically call evil good and good evil, that's going to be the loophole which many criminals are going to, well, so yeah, he molested a five-year-old and whatnot. But because the bail thing is racist, <laughs> so we're going to let him go because, hey, he, you know, even though he did this thing, he doesn't pose a threat to anybody else. That's going to be the loophole for this thing. You watch. You watch. Okay. All right. Now, uh, where do we leave off? Okay. The no cash bail is part of the Pre-Trial Fairness Act, a piece of legislation ensconed within the Safety Act that creates new processes for pre-trial release and detention decisions. Ahead of its impl implementation, it had faced opposition from Republicans as well as law enforcement who argued that these changes would not would put the public and law enforcement officers at risk. 
A newspaper clipping had been making the rounds on Twitter and other sites claiming that Illinois was instituting the purge, a reference to a movie in which all violent crime is legal for a day. It was for 12 hours, according to that movie. And that is predictive programming. That is predictive programming. you got to remember the ultimate goal of Hollywood movies, to distract and also to program you. you got to remember that. That's why you want to stay away from Hollywood movies, because they are predictive programming. Okay? Okay? We've talked about that before. Let's continue. Okay. A reference to the movie in which all violent crime is legal for a day. Such policies, according to the tweet below, would mean criminals could no longer be detained or required to pay bail in order to be released for violent offenses, including second-degree murder, drug-induced homicide, taking LSD and stuff like that, arson, aggravated ra battery, rape, and more. And in one of the links, they mentioned treason. Huh. Very interesting. All right, and mostly false. No cash bail policy. What does the law actually state? To explain, it's necessary to understand why there have been calls to abolish cash bail in the first place. According to the Center for American Progress, Catholics for American Progress, yeah, three out of five people sitting in U.S. jails have not been convicted of a crime amounting to nearly half a mil million people languishing in jail cells before trial. This is in part due to the cash bail system operated by most jur jurisdictions across the country that the center describes as criminalizing poverty. For example, I know of a crazy individual, literally devil-possessed man, who has been in jail since... Uh, uh, February, and if he gets out, he, he assaults police and stuff like that, and then they put him in there. He's been in the, the uh, county jail here since uh, February, I believe, February or March, okay? His bail is 100 bucks. okay? This implements he's still in there. They're going to let him out, okay? And yes, some of the bail that you see, and I look at this stuff. Uh, because uh, the, uh, the McHenry County um, website, which shows you the prisoners that have been put in prison. And guess what, people? The majority of them happen to be white. Okay? Put that in your book. Put that in your pipe. Those of you who like to claim racism. Okay? Uh, all right. People who are unable to afford bail remain in detention while awaiting trial for weeks or months. And the effect of this process are felt mostly by impervished communities of color. Ah. Indeed, the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority <laughs> reported, that, reported that of 100 individuals who have a bail bond hearing, 34 are detained pre-trial due to inability to pay cash bail. Nationwide in 20, 20, uh, 2009, covering the cost of bail is too often pro prohibitive for many defendants who can languish there for years without trial. Many point to the case of Khalif Broder in New York, who at 16 was held in Rikers Island for three years from 2010 to 2013 without being convicted of the charges that led to his arrest because his family could not afford the $3,000 bail cost. Accused of stealing a, ba a backpack, Browder killed himself two years after his release from prison. In the state of Illinois, on, 2000, on 2016 data, 90% of those held in jail statewide were in a pre-trial detention status, affecting more than 267,421 pre-trial jail detainees per year. They found that this practice was also costly to the state, estimated at $143 per person per day. Their research also found that 
Overuse of pretrial detention resulted in an increase in low-risk defendants committing new crimes, in part because pretrial detention contributed to negative monetary and employment outcomes. That's true. That is true. Uh, employer finds out that you've been in jail. That doesn't look good for you no matter what. This is where the Pretrial Fairness Act comes in. Advocates say a proposal developed by members of the Legislative Black Caucus and a number of grassroots groups on pretrial detention. The Act states, Detention only shall be imposed when it is determined that the defendant poses a specific, real, and present threat to a person or has a high likelihood of willful flight. Right there, the loophole. Well, a judge is going to be the one that determines that. And who says that judge is going to be Proverbs 24? Proverbs 24. So you take God out of a nation. This is what happens. You have America. Proverbs 24, verses 23 and 25. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. But, when them, but to them that rebuke him shall be delight. And, upon, and a good blessing shall come upon them. What's good? Hmm? What's good? God is good. And you want to know what good is, you find out what good is through the scriptures. But see, to base judgment, especially in the court of law, on scriptural basis is, is unconstitutional. And don't give me this, that our, our constitution was based off of Christian principles. Mm. Our founding fathers were Freemasons. I don't care what Mr. Eric John Phelps says. I don't care what His Holiness from Maine says and his massa, uh, you know, I don't care. Our founding fathers here in America were Freemasons. Not, that's not talking about the ones that came over on the Mayflower, okay? The Calvinistic Puritans. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the Freemasons who gave us that, okay? All right? That's going to be the loophole. Detention only shall be imposed when it is determined that the defendant poses a specific, real, and present threat to a person or has a high likelihood of willful flight. And because the devil has played the race card here in America, okay? Let me bring this up to bring this to light. There are a lot of people who have accused me of being racist against Mark the Messenger and have said to me, especially in email, you went after him because he's black. Uh, no, no. The Lord had me to do a video against that devil because, number one, he's teaching work salvation. Number two, he is against once saved, always saved. And number three, he is against uh, the redemption of the purchase possession. And number four, he claims to be a Jew, a Hebrew, and he is not. Okay? His skin color had nothing to do with it. Okay? But see, Satan has introduced the issue of skin color. Devoid of the fact whether, whether they be white or black, because that's what it's about. Let's put the cards on the table. Okay? Let's put the cards on the table. That's what it's about. That's what the devil has made it about. Okay? Doesn't matter if you're white or black. If you commit a crime, you ought to be detained. Okay? But see, Satan through our government is going to play the race card. Okay? And skin color is going to have a lot to do with those decisions. Okay? Whether it be white, or whether it be black, or brown, yellow, chartreuse, it doesn't matter. Because why? It's not going to be based off of righteous judgment. It's not going to be based off of righteous judgment. It is not. Proverbs 16. 
Proverbs 16, verses 10 on to verse 13. A divine sentence is in the lips of a king, of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. Okay? And also Proverbs 11, verses 1 on to verse 3. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Okay? Someone commits a murder, but yet, according to this law, uh, well, okay, he killed someone, but yet he, he doesn't look like a bad person. He doesn't look like a bad person. So, regardless of skin color, okay, <laughs> if that person has committed a murder, they ought to be detained. Okay? All right? When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom, fear of the Lord. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. That's going to be a loophole to where many people that ought to be behind bars are going to be let out right there because <laughs> uh, detention only shall be imposed when it is determined that the defendant poses a specific real and present threat to a person or has a high likelihood of willful flight. The act also states pretrial release may only be denied when a person is charged with an offense listed in section 110 uh, dash 6.1 or when the defendant has high likelihood of willful flight and after the court has held a hearing under section 110-6.1. The offenses listed under section 110-6.1 include when okay, the defendant who is charged with a forcible felony offense for which a sentence of imprisonment without probation Periodic imprisonment or conditional discharge is required by law upon conviction, and it is alleged that the defendant's pretrial release poses a specific real and present threat to any person or the community. In Illinois, forcible felony refers to treason. Treason. Isn't that interesting that that's the first thing mentioned? Treason. Treason. So to speak against um, uh, Jesuit born Pritzker, that's treason. Hmm, interesting. Illinois, in Illinois, forcible felony refers to first mention treason. Oh, 1984, anybody? First degree murder. Second degree murder, predatory criminal sexual assault of a child, aggravated criminal sexual assault, criminal sexual assault, robbery, burglary, residential burglary, aggravated arson, arson, aggravated kidnapping, kidnapping, aggravated battery resulting in great bodily harm or permanent disability or disfigurement of any disfigurement and any other felony which involves the use of threat of physical force or violence against any individual. Forcible fel felony. So a guy could bludgeon someone to death with a baseball bat because they're Muslim and they're uh, a white <laughs> British Israelite, okay? Uh, that means because he's able to put on the facade that he's a good person and pretend that he's a meek person in court to fool the court, the judge. It's like, well, hey, he did this thing, but yet look at him. He doesn't pose a threat. Then they get out and then they cause havoc online and whatnot, but they didn't pose a threat at the judge at the sentencing. That's going to be the loophole. That's the loophole where many wicked are going to be released. The act goes on to include stalking, aggravated stalking, domestic battery, discharge of a firearm, and more 
Under the new law, judges will consider each case on an individual basis to determine, release, and base their decisions on whether the suspect is a threat to the community or a flight risk. And if you are at all uh, familiar with the legal system here in America, it's like the medical establishment. It moves at two speeds, slow and stopped. Okay? And hence, an individual basis will be what? More time and pressure to the judge. Hence, a long, taxpayer-induced financial legal process that will go through this, 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 and drag it out for months on months on months and months at a time. So the same, see, the process of someone waiting for a trial taking months and months and months isn't going to change. The only thing that's going to change is the one who committed that crime may be out while that process is going forth. That's all. That's the only thing that changed. The process itself, if anything, is going to be even more hindered to move even more slowly or stopped. Unless, of course, see, there is one color that the United States legal system is biased racist towards. And that's the color of green money. Okay? All right? A lot of people want to say, well, it's racist against the Hamite. Or it's racist against the Japhethite. Or the Shemite. Okay? The American legal system is racist. But the color that it is most interested in is the color of green. Okay? The color of green. If you got green on your side, you can buy your freedom. You can afford the hot shot attorneys. Okay? But if you don't have the green, despite your uh, skin color, then the process begins to roll. Is there bias in the system uh, of skin color? Yes, there is. There has been. Provable. Yes. Yes. Okay? But in these days, skin color is not as prevalent. The basis of judgment is not on skin color per se, but more of the color of green, dear people. Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks on this. Okay? Now, let's see. Let's continue. Where did the misleading claims... Where did the misleading claims about the act come from? The claims in the tweet quoted above are in line with what numerous Republicans had been saying about the pretrial forms in the Safety Act. For example, Illinois State Representative Patrick Windhurst, a Republican, told the media, so there are... So there are a whole list of violent crimes, burglary, robbery, arson, kidnapping, almost all drug offenses, even drug distribution, DUI offenses, even DUI offenses that are involving in a fatality that do no quality for detention under the Illinois Safety Act. To me, that's going to mean a lot of individuals are committing crimes and being released immediately, if not within a couple of days. Others have gone further to say that this act empowers domestic abusers, drug cartels, and other commit others to commit violent crimes without being detained. Hmm. Mailings of articles similar to the claims in the above tweet criticizing Pritzker and the Safety Act came up in a Chicago Tribune investigation that found they were tailored to specific areas and sent to voters throughout Chicagoland under such labels as Chicago City Wire, DuPage Policy Journal, and Will County Gazette, and are filled with purported news articles containing misinformation about the effects of criminal justice reforms enacted under Pritzker.
The mailings contend the new law will free dangerous criminal sp- suspects from jail and unleash them into the suburbs. The Tribune investigation described political mailings similar to the one posted in the above tweet that the state new law that the state that state the new law mandates murder suspects awaiting trial be released from jail and gave a list of charges that were non-detainable. All right. All right. Do we need to continue with this? Yeah, no, we don't need to continue with this. We don't need to continue with this part. But I want to show you something else. Hold on. All right, now here's another um, article, the uh, baller alert. Like I said, uh, the one that we just looked at will be in the description box and also the the one from The Sun and also another one, um, which, uh, and you'll see the bias yourself, okay? You'll see the bias yourself. But I want to address this one too. This one is really quick. All right, you can't really see it. Illinois becomes the first state to pass a purge law that allows criminals to be released without bail. Video. Illinois is making history by being the first state to test out the purge in real life. (laughs) On January 1st, 2023, the Safety Act in Illinois will be active. The Safety Act stands for Safety, Accountability, Fairness, and Equity Today and will allow its residents to commit crimes freely. Uh, oh, what is that? A stupid ad. Governor Pritzker says the law marks substantial steps towards toward dism- dismantling the systematic racism that plagues our communities, our state, our nation, and brings us closer to true safety, true fairness, true justice. Yes, and by peace he shall destroy many. <laughs> My dear Ham, my brethren, you think that the government is on your side. God help you. My dear Japhethians, you think the government is on your side. God help you. And of course, the governments are definitely against the Shemites and the Hebrews, okay? Just get, get this disgusting tripe out of there, okay? Yeah, the government is on. The government is only on the side of those that have the green, boy. You got the green. The government is your friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. The counter signal report. The counter signal reported that the law would end cash bail for twelve non-detainable offenses. This includes second-degree murder, aggravated battery, arson, drug-induced homicide, kidnapping, burglary, robbery, intimidation, aggravated DUI, aggravated fleeing or eluding drug offenses, and threatening a public official. Yes. The Safety Act states that defendants of these crimes are presumed eligible for pretrial release. This is only possible if prosecutors Computers don't present clear, now listen to this, clear and convincing evidence showing the suspect poses a threat to a specific person. Like I said, that, that, dear friend, that is going to be the loophole. That's the loophole. You're seeing it right there. Go to the book of Malachi. I wish you never had said that, brother. Malachi. Go to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept this ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. By that loophole right there, boy. By that loophole right there. Yes, yes. Uh, If the, the judge is going to determine whether that person poses a threat to the community or is a flight risk, and it's up to the prosecutor 
If the prosecutors don't present clear and convincing evidence showing the suspect poses a threat to a specific person, that's the loophole. And like I said, the only thing that has changed is that the person who would be in jail going through the arduous, slow process, just like the medical establishment, two speeds of the law, uh, of the legal system here in America, slow and stopped. But if you got the green, then it's expeditious and then it's speedy. Or unless public opinion is your jury, which justice is not to be based upon public opinion but rather what is right and what is good what is right the scriptures and God has been taken out of the government long ago but the little G God of this world represented by Sosa yeah the new law okay the law will require prosecutors to request detention for the defendant. This also means the state of Illinois will hold a trial within 48 hours to determine if the suspect should be released. Investigators believe that not enough time, uh, that's not enough time to compile evidence from surveillance and body cameras, crime labs, and forensic uh, analysis. Amen. Amen. The only thing that changes is that the person isn't going to be sitting in there. Okay? And yes, you are guilty until proven innocent in this country. That is true. Yes, that is true. But hey, if you got the green, for the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money. America. The new law also gives criminals three phone calls. Within three hours of arriving at any detention center, there will not be any restriction on phone calls, so criminals will be able to intimidate or tamper with witnesses. And then that's it for that one. Okay? Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that's, that's enough. That's enough. Here. There we go. Let me get this. I don't like the new OBS. So, there you go. There you go. There you go. Something for you to think on. Something for you to chew on. Okay. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 13. I detest. I abhor the state of Illinois. But the Lord will not let us. Is not allowing us to move out of here. We were here initially because of my wife. And the Lord is keeping us here because something is going to happen to me, health-wise. I don't know what it is, but something is. That's why we're here. But, Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 17 on to verse 23, and we will be done. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes. Women. Oh, say the daughters of the whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The women that sow pillows. A pillow. You know. You know, a pillow. A pillow that's Nice and soft, smooth, soft, pliable. Okay? Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley? and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. What does this mean? Letting go the guilty who deserve to be where they are and yet 
persecuting the innocent who speak up, the innocent who want to stand for a standard, the standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye hunt, with where, wherewith there, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. Remember, you know, a pillow. A pillow as we know it today is so soft and comfortable. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Soft and pliable. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. And strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. That's the loophole. That's the loophole that this thing is going to introduce. Who's to say that, okay, he just butchered a bunch of people in a shopping mall, shot them down, but yet in court, he looks all dejected, all broken down. He, he, he speaks with a soft voice. He never, he, he loses his temper, uh, you know, but, it's, but because in a given moment, within 48 hours, and amen, that's not enough time. The legal system, unless you got the green, the legal system, just like the medical establishment, works at slow or stopped. Okay? Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way, by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. O oh, brethren. O oh, brethren. <laughs> Praise the Lord if you're not in Illinois. Okay? Like I said, the Lord did not allow my wife and I to move out of Illinois this year. Um, he didn't. He didn't. We're here, unfortunately. But if this is a trend, you know, leave it to good old Illinois. You would expect something like this to come from California, okay? But no, good old Illinois, yeah. Things, things are going to start shaping up here in America, brethren, my American countrymen. Now, how does this affect, like, the average person... It might not, but on a bigger scale. It shows that the decline and the fall of our nation is rapidly approaching. So, do with this as you will. Take from this as you will. I just, I, um, you know, yesterday a dear brother and friend gave a glowing testimony of just how the Lord is working in his life. And how the Lord is using him. I See, it's stuff like that that keeps us going. We love. I love. You know, when uh, my our, our brother from Croatia talks, uh, talks about how the Lord, what the Lord is doing through him. And that's not him boasting himself. He's talking about how the Lord is working uh, through him. That's not boasting. There's, there's a difference, okay? But we love to hear. I love to hear. How the Lord is working in the brethren's lives. How the Lord, what the Lord is doing through a brother. Like our brother from Croatia. You know, every once in a while he talks about how the Lord is working through him. And stuff like It's beautiful. Praise the Lord. We love that. We love to hear that. And also, too, very quickly. My dear brother from North Dakota. Your new place looks nice. Brethren, pray for our brother from North Dakota that he may have ample help to do the move into his new apartment because he himself is kind of debilitated, okay? So please pray that there will be people there to help him, okay? But anyway, brethren, that's going to be it for this video, a very quick video. Just wanted to address this. I'm going to, uh, Lord willing, uh, the next video going to be addressing one of the things that a dear brother of mine, a friend, mentioned in an email about 
our Lord and um, how we have a purpose. So, anyway, I just wanted to make this quick video. There will be links in the description box. Check it out for yourself. Those of you of my nation, this is something that you ought to pay attention to. And you of other nations, be aware. Okay, so that's going to be it. I'm going to get this uploaded. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.